wanted? Paul said an agent with an American accent looking for virtual assistant with standard accent wanted online English teacher with neutral accent sound familiar? Now, if you've been or you had been looking for these jobs, I'm pretty sure you didn't miss this small detail of their job requirements. But if you're one of those people with that English MTV DJ or FM radio DJ accent, it's not really a big deal. But if you're one of those people who has that distinct Filipino or any non-native English accent, then I think you can feel intimidated or you even feel insecure about your English speaking skills. And I can relate because I've been in that situation before. It's understandable, but do you ever wonder why the Filipino English accent is not even good enough for these jobs? I mean, what's wrong with the Filipino accent and what you can do about it? Hey there, Teacher Chris here from Gravy English, your go-to channel for everything about better English. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Please do give me a thumbs up at any point of this video if you are into teaching, learning, or improving your English skills. And if you think a friend or a relative will find this content helpful, please do share. If you feel more generous today, please do subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss on any upcoming video. What's wrong with the Filipino accent? Well, some people say that it's not really proper English, like many Filipinos mispronounce words. For example, we say culture instead of culture, broccoli instead of broccoli, chocolate instead of chocolate, Tea instead of tip. And by the way, it's pronunciation, not pronunciation. Some people also say that we have this thick, unpleasant sound. For example, we are used to saying, do you know that? Do you know that? When it should be, do you know that? Or something like, this is a thermometer instead of, this is a thermometer. Uh, intestine of chicken, chicken feet, or the balot. You eat a uh, lizard, bayawak, you know? No. <laughs> snake. You, you eat snake? No, you eat snake and lizard? Yeah. They're in Panawe, you eat snake. Or maybe a dog, pork blood, uh, pig. Yes, some people say that we even sound funny, that our English accent is not as classy elegant or refined like the American or British accent. So what do I think? Well, I think I partly agree, yes, but I think there's really nothing wrong the way Filipinos speak English. I mean, especially if they are talking to each other and they are perfectly understanding each other. I speak this way because this is my teaching accent. This is my presentation accent whenever I'm talking to my foreign students. But whenever I'm with my family and circle of friends, I actually speak in Taglish. It's a combination of Tagalog and English. And whenever I need to speak English, I most of the time use the Filipino English accent. And that's for a reason, because in fact, if you're talking in a very American way that people would think you're weird or you're trying to act like a know-it-all or someone who's too intellectual for them. So in fact, we speak the Filipino or Pinoy English because we don't want to be isolated by our peers. And I think another point to make is that there's nothing wrong with it because for the longest time, we've been using this kind of English to understand our school subjects. I mean, we learn math and science from teachers that do not speak the American accent. We can communicate with foreign tourists just fine. and. We're even popular in the world, we're famous in the world for being able to speak in English and communicate in that language well. We have sent thousands of professionals abroad and many of our people 
passed many English proficiency tests here and abroad, and we did just fine with our own Filipino accent. English is ever evolving, and although yes, we got it from the Americans, we refine it using our own speech, music, our pitch, and so it becomes or it became ours. For me, English is a global language, and so we have to accept every country's uniqueness. That being said, we cannot also ignore the fact that if you're working in like a call center or working as a virtual assistant or even an online English teacher, then that's a different story. Because in that case, it's always much better to speak a near native English speaker accent. I mean, it's a fact, right? If you have an above average speaking skills, including pronunciation and accent, then you have an edge in the global job market. So, how do you lose your native or your mother tongue accent? How do you speak more like the native speaker? Well, first thing I would like to point out, it's almost impossible to lose your mother tongue accent, no matter how long you really train in this accent. I mean, it, there will be some points when you speak that your mother tongue accent will become very obvious. And there's a slim chance that you'll be able to speak 100% perfectly like a native speaker. I think a more realistic perspective about it is you can reduce your mother tongue accent. So how do you lose your mother tongue accent? I think you can actually put it into three simple steps. One is to choose an accent to focus on. Second, adopt the native English speaker's sound. And third is to imitate and practice on the accent that you have chosen. So the first thing I pointed out is to choose one native speaker accent. So you don't want to sound American in the first part of your speech and then halfway through it you speak like an Australian. So just focus on one accent. So you will also be confused when you do your practices. Now the second thing is to adopt the native English speaker sound. So that means you have to drop your mother tongue accent sounds and then use the native speaker sounds instead. I'll explain that further later. Okay, and the third one is to imitate the sound. So you have to set aside a time every day to practice the native accent. So listen to podcasts or watch some videos and really pay attention to how the native speakers are talking. Okay, let's talk about the English speaker sound. So just a background story. In the past, I've worked as a recruiter for an online English school. And that position allowed me to be part of QA sessions in which I was able to talk with the foreigners and they were able to point out some of the specific sounds that they found to be very distinct in English, Filipino, or Filipino English accent. So let me share some of them with you so you have something to refer to when you do your practices or pronunciation practices. The first sound is the TH sound. Normally, some Filipinos would say something like that, there, there, they. To make the TH sound, you have to place your tongue lightly between your teeth and then breathe through it and then feel your vocal cords make a vibration. So, like so, say that, there, there, they. Okay, a similar sound is a TH sound, but without the vibration in the vocal cords. Some Filipinos would say, tink, taught, but it should be, think, thought. Another problem sound is the F sound. Some Filipinos would say something like, pish, pilm. Peel, Philippines. 
Now, to make the F sound, you have to make your upper teeth touch the lower lip and then breathe. So something like like so, we say fish, film, field, Philippines. Moving on is a short A sound. So some Filipinos would pronounce these words bat, mat, cat. Okay, to sound more native like, you have to cup your jaw upward as you make the short A sound. Like so, cat, mat, pat. Okay, so the last problem sound has to do with the consonant clusters. But this one is not so obvious. In fact, you wouldn't really notice if you don't pay attention that much. But yes, this is also very distinct with our English Filipino accent. The consonant clusters include the SP, SC, or SK, and the ST combination. All right, so let's go to the SP sound first. Normally, Filipinos would pronounce these words as speak, spoon, spot. But native English speakers would make a sound similar to the SB, sb sound. So these words become speak, spoon, spot. Okay, moving on to the SC or SK combination, Filipinos would say these words as is cream, is cake, is crop. But native speakers would actually produce a sound similar to the SG combination or SG. So they say these words as scream, skate, scrub. Okay, and finally, the ST combination. So Filipinos would read these words or pronounce these words as stick, still, storm. But native speakers would actually pronounce these words with the SD sound or SD. So for example, it becomes or these words become stick, still, storm okay so there practice these sounds and while you're at it also try to imitate the speakers that you have chosen and set aside maybe five to ten minutes every day to do your practices and when you listen also notice how the speakers connect or blend the sounds of the letters for example instead of saying let them go Native speakers would say, let him go. Or, how is it? They would say, how's it? So notice those nuances in their speech as well. And also notice how they squeeze and drop certain sounds. For example, they would normally not say company, but company, basically, but instead, basically, different but instead different so there go ahead and practice but take note that adopting a native English speaker's accent would take time and it will not happen overnight and it really depends on how much time you invest to practice it and how motivated you are to really get that native English accent I hope you learned something valuable today and give me a thumbs up if you like this content. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!